We recently shared some videos about Eurobike and all the cool things that we saw there. But one thing I realized we didn't share is a video about cargo bikes. One of the best places to go for cargo bikes is Eurobike, as they're really kind of mature in that way. Other place that's really cool for cargo bikes is the Cargo Bike Festival, which just happened recently. And if you're into cargo bikes, I definitely recommend checking it out. I want to make this video about some of the cargo bikes I consider to be my favorite, or at least the ones that I'm kind of excited about. Keep in mind that my focus generally is somewhat limited to the US, but I try to cast a wider net in this video, highlighting some of the bikes which might not be available here just yet. Now, before we get into my favorites, I'd like to just cover some of the basics. Now, I personally consider something a cargo bike if it can accommodate more than 100 pounds of cargo. Other people might have different definitions, but I think that that's a simple way to differentiate. Some of the bikes might be cargo bikes or regular bikes that can just carry stuff. There's different types of cargo bikes. The first type is the one that I use personally. It's called a front loader cargo bike. Keeps the weight really low and centered. I specifically use a Risa Mueller load. You can see it's got the box up front and you could carry kids, a small adult, dog, all different sort of stuff. This is also known in the Netherlands as a Bakfiets. Then you have a rear loading cargo bike, also known as a long tail or a mid tail cargo bike. This generally carries the cargo in the rear behind the rider. This is pretty popular for people that want more of a traditional style bike, but they wanna have the capability of just carrying more. Another example is cargo trikes. Now this could have two wheels in the front or two wheels in the rear. Some of them are fixed. Some of them will lean or tilt. Some have suspension, all sorts of different things like that. And then we also have four wheeled cargo bikes, which are not quite as popular, partly because they're a little bit more complex to make, but also some of the regulations around them are not so clear. And that's something we hope will change eventually in the US, but in, in Europe, it seems that they accept four-wheel cargo bikes. Although I will say overall, some of these bigger cargo bikes, it is getting to be a little bit tricky with some of the legislation around them and stuff like that. So something to keep in mind and, and kind of keep your ear out for. Now you may wonder why I love cargo bikes and why I want to be in the business of selling them. Part of it is just based on their capabilities. A bike in its general form or even an electric bike, it has its limitations and a cargo bike just extends that so much more. You can really do most things you can with a car with a cargo bike, which is kind of cool. I tend to like that idea to be able to replace car trips. I also like the idea of carrying more things with me carrying people with me, often make videos on a cargo bike. You probably have seen some of them if you follow this channel. We've done a lot of videos like that with Tara sitting up in the bucket. I've had some videos with a big robotic camera sitting in front of the cargo bike. And as a creative person, I think I really enjoy all those possibilities. I also carry my wife in front of my cargo bike. She's not that comfortable with some of the bike infrastructure in the US, so it enables us to get out together in places where we might not always be so comfortable to do so. We actually even got married on our cargo bike, or at least celebrated our marriage afterwards on our cargo bike. I'll talk more about that at a later time. My whole family in general is into bikes, but I've seen specifically my brother and sister, how their families really have been transformed through the use of cargo bikes, like carrying their kids and, and the connection that it brings to them and the way it connects them to their environment and their community. This is something that we're seeing really transform communities overall. I'm just really excited about the future of cities if they have more bikes in them, more cargo bikes, and people are able to connect more and really be involved in the community in the same way that we used to more so before we got kind of stuck behind a windshield, if you will. I mean, I've been doing this for about 11 years now. A lot has changed, but some of the most exciting things I see on a daily basis is like families getting on cargo bikes and the way that we can teach young people about the possibilities of bikes and using them as a form of transportation. If I'm trying to contribute to a greater good, this is definitely a way to do so. Now I should note at the moment, we only offer Bosch powered electric cargo bikes in our shop because we found them to be really the safest on the market. But as the safety standards and requirements change, maybe we'll see more cargo bikes meet the standards that Bosch meets voluntarily. Now, I know everybody doesn't really love the idea of more regulation and more standards, but I think it's really inevitable in my eyes. So you might notice that I don't highlight as many of the cheaper products out there. And I guess I just don't wanna to contribute to the use of products that might not be tested or contribute to the perception that electric 
bikes are unsafe. This is a big issue, specifically in New York City. I mean, so far this year, over 191 fires related to e-mobility devices. And sure, some might say we can narrow it down to certain things, but like this is a really important thing and what I see to be one of the biggest threats to this industry overall. But I'm working on another video on this topic specifically, so you can stay tuned for that. But enough about that boring stuff, let's talk about the bikes. I decided to make this list alphabetical by brand as to make it a bit more organized. We'll put time codes in the description if you want to hop around. Now the first brand on my list is Benno. I've gotten pretty close to the founder of Benno over the past several years and he's a really awesome guy and he's really inspiring to me. Very creative, very outside of the box thinking. He's clearly not somebody that's just following the rest of the herd. He's kind of creating new ideas and really trying to serve the market and trying to find new and creative tools to help people get around and to make them feel good while they do that. From his perspective, a big part of it is actually like how we look on the bike, how people perceive us, and then it's not just a matter of the simple utility of things. And a lot of people are driven by more than just the utility of things, you know, as vain as that might seem, especially in America. So as electric bikes and as cargo bikes become cool and people perceive them to be interesting and cool, it, it makes it easier for people to get onto them. As some of you may or may not know, he's actually the co-founder of Electra, and the Electra Townie actually became one of the most popular bikes in the world. He's definitely got some of the good experience to bring to this industry, and I'm excited about that. He entered this market, or I should say re-entered this market with the Benno Boost. Right now we're on the second generation of that, which there's a slight variance to the original second generation generation when they updated the motor. There's some other little details that they updated as well, but he likes to call it e-tility as opposed to uh, e-cargo bike. And the idea is that it's a regular bike that can do more and it could do more than most. It can carry two kids on the rear. I guess you could even potentially carry a kid up front and it's got loads of different accessories available for it. This is really critical. I think that this is an area that a lot of companies can fall short that they don't have a really wide array of accessories at the time that they introduce a product to the market and as a result it, it really uh, can't realize the full utility that's that's available to it next brand is called Kago they have a model called the FS 200 this bike was introduced several years ago and caught a lot of excitement. It's definitely unique looking. There's a lot of attention to detail in some of the elements. This is considered a front loader cargo bike and inside the box, it's really well designed. This bike, there was some talk about it becoming available in the US. I'm not sure if that's actually gonna happen, maybe in time. And it has a lot of the standard parts that we find common on a lot of cargo bikes, like the Bosch motor system, as the Enviolo hub. It's also available with the Enviolo automatic hub. And I think a lot of fans families really appreciate the idea of an automatic transmission, not having to worry about shifting the gears. You'll see some other models that have this same transmission on it as well. Now, another brand that's been kind of interesting to me in the electric cargo bike space is Cube. This brand has been more well known for electric mountain bikes and trekking bikes. They've grown quite a bit in the past several years. One model called the Cube Cargo Sport, which is a front loader cargo bike with a derailleur setup. They don't seem to have as many accessories as some of the other manufacturers but definitely pretty interesting and if you're looking for a, a sporty type cargo bike something to keep an eye on they also have a cargo trike that they produced in collaboration with BMW and I think that that's interesting for a variety of different reasons thinking about car companies getting involved in this and we're starting to see that more and more particularly makes sense for car companies to get involved with cargo bike companies you wouldn't really buy a car that couldn't carry passengers passengers or cargo. So working with a bike manufacturer that can really take on some of the similar characteristics of a car makes a lot of sense. My key takeaway from this is that car companies are gonna start looking at themselves more as transportation companies as private car ownership becomes less and less of a thing particularly in inner cities. It makes sense for them to expand their portfolio so they could continue to participate in some of these groups that they might not otherwise reach in the future. Next on the list is Butchers and Bicycles. Now they're from Copenhagen. They make a model called the MK1E. It's a three-wheel tilting cargo bike. It's been updated 
with the newer motor system. The geometry changed slightly, but overall still the same silhouette. It's the type of bike that's really striking to see it in person. This again is the Bosch motor system, Enviolo hub. Really common to see this combination. I think in part because that Enviolo hub works really well with the higher torque motor system. Next on the list is KTM. Now, for most people, they probably recognize the name KTM from the motorsports and motorcycles side of things. They actually are a relatively large bicycle brand as well, particularly in Europe, although they haven't really been available so much in the US. Now that's changed recently, and they have a cargo model called the Makina Multi. Now this is more of a traditional bike that can carry more as opposed to like a full on cargo bike. There's a lot of utility in it, really nice design to it. And I think a lot of people really appreciate the modern design and look to this. The next brand is Gleam. This is an Austrian brand we got introduced to several years ago when they first launched their product at Eurobike. It's a tilting cargo trike, but it's unique in that the wheels are really independent. You can see this in their demo, like they have like one wheel is up on a curb and the other wheel is on the ground. And it's really interesting how they're able to regulate that. A lot of engineering going in here. It seems that they took a lot of these ideas to some of these other like motorcycle, three wheel motorcycle sort to set up. Now their bikes are primarily used for commercial applications, but I just had to put it on the list because I've been following them closely and I hope that eventually one day they make their way to the US. Another brand that's pretty cool is Kettler. They have a bunch of different cargo bikes and they've been involved in bikes as well as fitness equipment for a really long time. They've been talking about coming to the US. They have a really interesting steering design on their front loader cargo bike. They also have a full suspension version of that. And they have another compact cargo bike Definitely seems like they took a lot of inspiration from the GSD in, in that one, but you know, these compact cargo bikes are becoming more and more popular and I respect what Kettler is doing here. So now we can't really talk about front loading cargo bikes without talking about the Larry versus Harry Bullet. Now this bike is really the bike that helped to make front loading cargo bikes cool and help them to appeal to a different demographic. Specifically at this time, I think that they were focused primarily on the messenger scene, fixed gear bikes with front racks, but they took this front loader cargo bike design, which was very popular in the Netherlands in this region, and they really helped to make it more modern and more sporty. And they actually made a front loader cargo bike that was fast and lightweight. And they did so with the aluminum frame. They used a lot of mountain bike and road bike style parts. We've sold their products in the past and we hope to work with them in the future as Shimano works to comply with some of the new standards in New York City. Now it's available in a non-electric as well as electric version. The electric version has several different Shimano motor system options as well as different drive trains. You can get it with a standard derailleur. You can get a derailleur with electronic shifting. You can get an internal hub with and without electronic shifting so really you have loads of different options loads of different box options now this is another example of a more mature cargo bike product so you have a lot more adaptations and and kind of these little micro industries that are built up around it creating boxes and all sorts of bags and things like that to fit this bike specifically. And I really appreciate what they've done here. Now, as many of you may know, we've been looking for a sponsor for a long time and we actually got the opportunity to work with Skillshare. So I'm really excited to introduce this brand to you, but I've been using their product for some time and I consider myself a sort of infinite learner, meaning I always have a thirst to learn more. And Skillshare is really a perfect tool for that. Whether you're looking to perfect your skills in Photoshop or you're like me and you wanted to learn more about the art of storytelling, Skillshare is an excellent platform. You can learn from those at the top of their game like MKBHD in his YouTube success class. Through this class, I was able to get a better understanding how a pro like Marquez handles planning, scripting, shooting, and editing. I have a lot more plans to take classes this winter and maybe you'd wanna consider investing in yourself this holiday season and take advantage of Skillshare's best deal of the year. For a limited time only, use my link in the description to get 50% off your Skillshare subscription and let me know what you learned. The next bike is my favorite bike personally. It's the Risa Muir Load. I specifically have the Risa Muir Load 60 roll off high speed and that has a 14 speed internally geared hub high-speed Bosch motor. Now, I don't specifically carry kids 
at the moment, but uh, I do carry my wife as I shared. I carry Tara sometimes filming. Sometimes I carry a special camera rig. You know, I just like the, the flexibility of it. The other cool thing about this bike, it still feels really nimble. I'm able to handle it really well. With the full suspension, I feel even more planted than I generally do on any other bike with that longer wheelbase and the full suspension. So it's available in a bunch of different configurations. As with most recent Mueller bikes, it's available with different motor systems. So this is available with the standard CX motor, has a little bit more low end power, but tops out at 20 miles an hour in the US or 15.5 miles an hour in Europe. Or you have the high speed version, which is a little more popular for us specifically. That bike goes up to 28 miles an hour with a similar torque as the CX motor. It has different box options. You have a 60 centimeter box and a 75 centimeter box, depending if you wanna carry like two kids the 75 has an option for a three. And now with their newer version, they have a bunch of different new boxes available. And one is this IDIT, which is really cool. It's really built by just a cargo bike enthusiast and Risa Mueller is like, this thing's cool, we wanna offer it. This is the type of bike you wanna hold no punches, this is the way to go. But something we're seeing with Risa Mueller overall and a lot of the brands that have kind of been early in the cargo bike space is they're just investing more and more in this. They had another model called the Paxter 70, which previously was launched a couple years ago. They had a small issue with the steering and they're reintroducing this with a upgrading steering mechanism as well as a, a more heavy duty fork on it. They have a heavier duty suspension. They also now have a rear suspension option for this bike. And this is the type of bike if you want really the maximum cargo capacity. They can fit three kids up front and you can even put a kid on the rear. They have two other new front loader cargo bikes for this year. It's called the Transporter. And it kind of looks similar to the previous version of the Paxter, although there are some minor differences there. This is available in the 65 centimeter. We have a box available for dogs specifically. It's got a door on the side. It is pretty popular for people to buy cargo bikes to carry dogs specifically. And they also have an 85 version, which is really made specifically for cargo applications with just a massive box on the front. Now they don't stop there just with their front loader cargo bikes. They also have some long tail bikes. Historically, their multi-charger has been very popular, lots of different options, and it's kind of a more premium long tail bike. They have some different options like a belt, and an Enviolo hub. It also has a two battery option, but they've expanded on the multi-charger and added this bike called the Multi Tinker based on their Tinker platform, which is a 20 inch wheel compact bike. But this, they made a compact cargo bike. So they've extended the rear end to allow for you to carry two kids in the back. Come standard with a double kickstand, loads of different options for accessories, bags, everything like that. And I think this bike is gonna be really popular for those who are looking for a compact bike that's got a little bit more premium touch points on it. Another brand that I'm excited about seeing some new developments in their area is Surly. So they have the Surly Big Easy, a build on the Surly Big Dummy, which historically has been a very popular cargo bike. That was a non-electric bike. Actually, years ago, we've converted some of those back when we were doing that sort of thing. But the Big Easy is using the Bosch Generation 2 motor, and they recently introduced this model called the Skid Loader. This skid loader I think is gonna be particularly popular for those that are looking for like a steel mountain bike that can carry more. They wanna throw their kid on the back and take them on some mountain bike trails. This is a pretty cool setup. The next brand on this list has been wildly popular. It's Turn. Now Turn entered the cargo bike space several years ago with their GSD and they've had the generation one GSD, but now they're on the generation two. So they've updated it slightly. They've put a new motor system. They've implemented a lot of changes that the community was suggesting. Probably their most popular bike, and that bike can carry up to 200 pounds on the rear rack, which is pretty serious. Pretty easily get you two kids on the back or a small adult or even a larger adult at times, but maybe not so ideal to do that consistently. But all sorts of different cargo accessories, and most of these are compatible throughout their lineup or they have small different adaptations for some of the different models, like the HSD. That one is designed for one child on the back or one small adult. It has a smaller uh, weight capacity of 130 pounds, 
but it has similar capabilities on the front. A lot of the front loaders, historically, we've seen these like rain covers, which are really helpful in the winter and that sort of thing. Now, Turn introduced these covers for the rear of their bikes, and they have a product called the Storm Shield, and it really covers the kids inside of them. But the Turn Quick Haul is kind of similar to the HSD, but it's a little bit of lower price point, a little bit less comfort features, I guess you can say. So it doesn't have a front suspension fork and you know some other little minor changes. So if you're looking to save a little bit of money, but still be into a turn with all the accessory options and such, the Quick All is a really great option to go with. Next on the list is Urban Arrow. They have a variety of different models available, but really the most popular for them is the Urban Arrow family. It's available with both the performance line and the cargo line motor with some slightly different spec versions. Loads of different accessories. You can carry upwards of four small kids on the front and you can even put a kid on the rear if you really want to pack them in there. Also have a shorter version called the Shorty as well as several different models for the commercial applications. They have kind of a longer version of the family with the flatbed or different box options on there, as well as a really heavy duty version called the Tender, capable of over 600 pounds on the front of it. It's gonna be interesting to see as some of these really heavy duty cargo bikes start to gain popularity in the market, keeping an eye on that and, and seeing how that goes. Now the next brand is Velo. I've been really excited about these guys after first getting introduced to Stefano several years ago at Eurobike. Now this is an Italian brand and they're actually making their bikes completely in Italy. So they're using Italian steel and they're welding and assembling their frames in Italy, assembling the bikes overall. We've been kind of working with them. We're hoping to get some sort of deal going to bring their bikes over to the US, but I'm just really excited about them. I think they make a really cool product. They're very beautiful. The colors in particular, I think they do a good job with that. I actually met the woman in the company that helps with that. A little bit weird coming from a guy that's colorblind, but I guess maybe I'm just more sensitive to that. I don't know, but I appreciate it. One of the things that's kind of unique about this is a chromoly steel frame. Most bikes these days are aluminum, so it gives a little bit of a softer ride. The other thing is it's really set up from the start in this more upright Dutch position. I think a lot of people really appreciate that, including myself. Now the next bike on my list is the V-Love Armadillo. This bike is really quite extraordinary. I mean, I got to build one of these up several years ago for DHL in New York City as they've been operating these for several years in Germany, but they've been working on getting them into the US. But the challenge is some of the regulations around four wheeled bikes, they don't really fit the standard definition of a bicycle. It's kind of been a very small pilot at this point, but really cool four wheel independent suspension, roll off hub, overall awesome bike. One of the features that I really appreciate about this is the modular box system. So the idea is that you can have several boxes in a van or in a truck and you can load them onto a bike and kind of distribute them throughout the city. It gives you a bit of an indication of how cargo might be delivered in the future of our cities. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. As I said earlier, this list is by no way exhaustive. There's plenty of other bikes. These are just some of the ones that come to the top of mind when I think about cargo bikes, when I think about some of the things that are interesting to me. I encourage you to share your own experience. Is there a bike that you own that you're really excited about? Do you feel like we should have other bikes on the list? And I'm sure other people would like to hear from you, especially if you have personal experience, that's a great thing. Lastly, if you're in the US and you're interested in a cargo bike, or if you know someone who is, please reach out to us. We'd be happy to help. We're really uh, focused on this space specifically, so we'd love to be able to assist anyone in helping them to find the right cargo bike for them that's gonna serve them well for years to come. So I hope you enjoyed, and I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Well, see you soon.